Simon the Sorcerer, I'm surprised you don't have any <laughs> thoughts. Wasn't it amazing that a man who himself is so powerful in the city, spiritually, uh, that he accepts Christ and he is amazed by the works that Philip did. Yeah, and he changed his heart. I know, I know. So it is, it is really amazing. Okay, so now these days when we go and minister, we might think, oh, there's a stronghold in the city or, um, you know, God has called me to this town, but there are these uh, so-called spiritual uh, giants in that place. Uh, is it possible for them to accept Christ? Look at this Simon the Sorcerer, amazing spiritual man himself, but he uh, accepted the gospel and along with that, he followed, he wanted to become a disciple. So he followed Philip uh, and followed the teachings of the kingdom of God about Jesus. And even when his heart became wicked, right, uh, God ministered to him. And uh, uh, now there are some extra biblical reports that say that some say that uh, uh, he took the rebuke of Peter seriously and he became a better man. But there are records that say that uh, he did not respond rightly to Peter's rebuke. So some people uh, say historically, you know, when you look at some of the writings, uh, it seems Simon continued with a heart of bitterness and pride and uh, he was preaching the wrong gospel later on. So basically, you know how we, we said, uh, that people can become mixed up if they don't respond to the work of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we don't know exactly to point out and say Simon did well or Simon did badly later. We don't have uh, anything in the Bible, uh, so uh, we will not comment on it. But uh, this is what you know. Uh, some of the historians say that he did okay and others that he didn't do okay yeah okay so rn says uh, confusion because of two simons in the bible huh, this is simon the sorcerer rn so you can refer to this person as simon the sorcerer simon peter is the apostle peter all right now let's continue let's see what else is going to happen through the ministry of philip Okay, so far Samaria has received the gospel uh, and now what does the Lord do? Verse 26, an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip. Wow, what a believer. Think about it. Uh, he's moving in miracles, signs, wonders, deliverances, preaching the gospel, preaching in different villages. Uh, it, it's amazing. It's really amazing, isn't it? That uh, a believer is so passionate and God's power is working beautifully through his life. We all would want to be like Philip, okay? And uh, he is uh, being led by God also. In this case, you see an angel. God leads in so many different ways. In this case, an angel is telling him, Philip, you get up, uh, arise and go toward the south alongside the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So God is guiding uh, Philip uh, and telling him, you go to a particular place. It's like saying, uh, okay, Nancy, you're sitting here in uh, uh, Hebal, Bangalore. Uh, why don't you go to Koramangla? Okay, an angel comes and tells me. So I'm like, oh, okay. Maybe God has an assignment there because when I'm serving the Lord, that's where my heart is. I want to uh, go to the next assignment okay? that, that God has for me. So uh, Philip moves on. This is desert. So the angel leads him to a desert. Now also think about this. What was important for Philip? For Philip, it was important to serve God wherever God called him. Now, in Samaria, we ha we saw all the prayer meetings are going on. And uh, please excuse me. There's just some sound issue here. Just a moment.
yes sorry about that yeah so uh, everything was going on so beautifully uh, and uh, when ministry is going great in a given place just imagine yourself you have gone to plant church people are responding every day your meetings are overflowing at that time an angel of the lord comes to you let's say you are in bangalore and uh, god is telling you i want you to leave everything and i want you to go to some village okay i'm just saying uh, uh, some chandpur i want you to go to chandpur village you will think god i can't leave why are you sending me to a dry place angel is telling philip to go to desert but philip is a true minister of god he is not getting uh, caught up in the excitement which is happening in bangalore he is like wow ministry is great but god i will go where you tell me to go so immediately you know philip packs his bags he is ready to go that's a true uh, servant of god okay and the same way in our lives god will lead us according to his purposes according to his will but sometimes uh, you know we we may not have an idea sometimes it can be a little sudden like this and god says you move from your exciting place i'll show you a new dry place can you go there because i want you to serve me there you i want you to preach the gospel there but when we are children of god we should say okay lord yes we will do it now philip did not ask god for explanation why why are you sending me who is there why should i talk to the person over here why can't i continue my work here i'm getting good offering in the church philip didn't say any of that so he moves so we see he arose and went and behold a man of ethiopia a eunuch of great authority under candace the queen of the ethiopians who had charge of all her treasury and had come to jerusalem to worship was returning and sitting in his chariot he was reading isaiah the prophet okay so now that the spirit has led him to a road okay uh, there somebody is reading from the book of isaiah now philip has no idea who is this person nothing but he is just following the instruction of god so in this way in our lives also important thing is to follow god's instructions we may not have all the details of what god is going to do but obedience simple obedience and here there is a person a ethiopian eunuch and he is influential he has a, a, a place he's in charge of all the treasury okay candace is like saying you know pharaoh we use the term pharaoh right so like that candace is like the queen one of uh, queen of ethiopia and those days ethiopia today it's a country but it was a region at that time so it's a huge region in africa uh, and uh, this man the eunuch is directly engaged with the uh, the queen okay and the treasuries of the queen so you imagine if if uh, there is a minister like finance minister and the key of the country's treasures are with this minister it's amazing it's amazing because he can do whatever he wants to do right hopefully he is a righteous person but that's the kind of influence that this ethiopian eunuch had and philip does not know anything he's only following god's word arise go to this place so god takes him to an influential person so in the same way in our lives when god says you go we may not know what god is doing it can be an influential person or it may not be like this ethiopian eunuch but god has a plan that is the reason god is sending you there so we go there isn't it we go and we do what god wants us to do in this case what was the situation the eunuch he is uh, sitting in his chariot and he is reading from isaiah the prophet so it shows us that this person he had come to jerusalem to worship he seems to be a devoted person uh, and the fact that he is reading from isaiah also shows us that he is very interested to know more about god and in those days getting see today we have bibles 
you know, you open the phone, there is a Bible, different, different versions. You open the, uh, uh, you know, internet, you can, you can access Bibles. There are, you know, in our houses also, two, three Bibles we may carry. But in the times of uh, the early church, getting us like that script of Isaiah, it must have been very expensive because no photocopy, people will write it. If you need another copy, somebody has to write it. You have to pay the price and buy that scroll. So it shows that to study the word of God, this Ethiopian had made the effort. He bought the scroll. He's trying to read. Why is he trying to read? So that he can understand. Who is this? Who is this in Isaiah? Uh, you know, Isaiah talks about the, the servant right who 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 uh, will be humiliated basically it's jesus and his life but ethiopian is not understanding who is being talked about here and he's trying to read it so uh, this holy spirit leads philip there verse 29 then the spirit said to philip see these are all the ways god communicates angel spoke now holy spirit is speaking to philip what the holy spirit is saying go near and overtake this chariot so he has come he has come to, uh, he has left Bangalore, his great ministry, Bangalore, he left it. He went off to some Chandpur place. Over there, he doesn't know what to do. But uh, uh, Holy Spirit is telling him, you go a little fast. You know, go to this house, which is in the corner. Exact location. Go near and overtake this chariot. Uh, God is telling him. So he does that. So when Philip ran to him, when he goes for it, similarly, like, you know, when he goes near that house, he can hear somebody reading some book from the Bible. Okay, you're able to hear that. Then you can go and explain to that person. Same thing is happening with Philip. So he hears uh, someone reading from the prophet Isaiah and said, he asks them a question. Are you able to understand what you are reading? Good question, isn't it? Philip asked a very good question. Uh, and he said, the Ethiopian says, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. So it's like a divine appointment. And you know, sometimes when uh, there are people who are seeking God, they are ripe and ready to give their hearts to God. Uh, sometimes God makes us cross paths with them. And we can also pray a prayer which says, Lord, bring us, uh, uh, take us to people who want to know you, Lord. Uh, Lord, lead us to those who have hungry hearts to know about you. I don't know what prayer Philip used to pray, but look at his life. So beautiful. He goes to Samaria, preaches. People respond to the word. There is great joy in the city. Then he's listening. To Holy Spirit, okay, what to do next, what to do next. Maybe he would have prayed and said, Lord, okay, people have heard the gospel here. Now show me who is the next person, who is hungry for your word, who wants to know you. And Holy Spirit is taking him to Ethiopian eunuch on that road, okay, that Jerusalem Gaza road. He takes him there. God can do the same thing for us. We can pray and say, Lord, show us the people, take us there. Then God takes us. And Philip connects also in a nice way. When he meets the person, he asks a good question. What is it? What uh, Are you able to understand what you're reading? And the person says, no. If you explain, I can understand. And that's how he <laughs> begins to talk to this Ethiopian eunuch. OK. The exact place where the eunuch was reading. It said he was led as a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb before his its sharer is silent. So he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. So the exact words, what the eunuch was reading had to do with the life of Jesus. So the eunuch asked Philip, uh, whom does the prophet say this of, of himself or of some other man? So he's curious to know, who is this about? So Philip gives him the answer. Beginning at scripture, beginning at this scripture, preach Jesus to him. Do you remember? Every time 
the apostles what would they do if a opportunity comes stand up and preach about jesus central message is jesus christ and response right response is repent be baptized a man got healed stand up and preach about jesus christ people respond so that is the work of the early church preach about jesus and after preaching about jesus ask them to respond then they give their lives to christ so this passage of isaiah philip explained to this uh, um man and said yunak and said look this is about jesus christ okay uh, and that was just the starting he picked up this portion but through this portion he explained about jesus now the yunak understood everything because he was hungry isn't it and that is why the holy spirit led philip to him now once the yunak had heard this i think you know philip also continued in the chariot for some time with the yunak so they went down the road they came near some water the yunak understood so well that he knew he had to respond so the yunak says see here is water what hinders me from being baptized there is a response once you know about jesus are you willing to be saved are you willing to repent of your sins are you willing to accept christ into your heart into your life and be baptized and the message of uh, uh, the apostles was you know repent and be baptized so the eunuch himself uh, or, or or the uh, yeah eunuch himself says water is there why should i not get baptized so i'm going to respond to what you have told me about the lord jesus christ then philip said if you believe with all your heart you may so this also shows us that baptism is for the believers okay when we believe with our whole heart as a sign as a gesture of accepting christ repenting of our sins we can be baptized so philip tells him yes if you believe in jesus with your whole heart let's go ahead you can get baptized and he answered and said the eunuch said i believe that jesus christ is the son of god and so he commanded the chariot to stand still so obviously you know he's a man of influence he says come on stop the chariot what is there i want to go and get baptized so both philip and the eunuch they go down into the water and who is baptizing the eunuch some believer not even an apostle at least you know there is no uh, title given to philip at this point uh, but a believer because nobody else is available over there so this person philip is baptizing the eunuch and you know something philip did not realize what god was doing through his simple obedience for philip he was just following one instruction at a time arise and go okay he went to that road then go overtake the chariot he went but this eunuch is the person who went back to ethiopia which means the gospel had gone from jerusalem into a new continent of africa and i really don't know if philip even understood that but the holy spirit was orchestrating this you know the holy spirit was uh, working beautifully through the simple obedience of a believer called philip today when holy spirit tells us you do this you say this you speak to this person you give this we may think what is the big deal but if you see the bigger picture if you see it from god's perspective god is doing great things in the kingdom through the simple obedience which you and i may display before god okay
something simple god says pick up the phone call that brother pray with him point is we should do it it's not about big or small it's about being led by the spirit it's about obeying god and through that god can touch many lives now through philip gospel went where continent of africa and this person is an influential person he is in charge of the treasuries of the queen of ethiopia so obviously he would have spread the gospel in the continent of africa okay so it's amazing it is so powerful in chapter 8 the gospel is traveling like anything not just into samaria but also into another continent and this also helps us to understand you know in the olden times we used to hear about missionaries going here going there traveling to far away countries okay uh, to take the gospel that's wonderful it's amazing but you know at the same time today in our cities for example if you take bangalore so many people come here to study from other states they come from other countries right uh so just one interaction with that person it can be a blessing to that person they go back to their country they go back to their state you know they will take the gospel with them we may not necessarily go to you know different countries maybe god is not going to take you and me to so many other countries like missionaries of all times but right here on our soil when we are sharing the gospel to somebody what is happening along with them the gospel is traveling everywhere okay so these are all things for us to see and understand in in how god works and uh, you know how the 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 mission work of god is being done but for us as believers let's keep it simple obedience what is the holy spirit saying what is god saying ah next step i know only next step good enough do the next step god is making an impact in the kingdom through that next step so we saw philip ministering to uh, the you know sort of a uh, lower section of uh, society okay uh, the samaritans who were rejected by the jews we saw philip ministering to an influential man in samaria simon the sorcerer we saw philip ministering to uh this ethiopian eunuch so like stephen an ordinary believer in the church is doing such a great work for the kingdom of god okay and today even all of us you know believers we can do that and we should encourage the believers also to do that it's not about having any title you know senior so and so something something not needed simple obedience we can extend the kingdom wherever we are okay moving on verse 39 uh now when the baptism was over when they came up out of the water the spirit of the lord caught philip away it says you know you hear about things like this in the ministry of ezekiel you know the spirit of the lord it it took me by the hair like i went here i went there so he was transported to different places ezekiel talks about that in this case philip physically the spirit of the lord transported him and the eunuch could not see him any more but beautiful thing is it says eunuch went back rejoicing in the city of samaria what did the ministry of philip do people were rejoicing wow what is this you know gospel healing deliverance all that eunuch received the gospel he is rejoicing so the ministry of philip has brought joy to the people but philip himself he was taken away from there 
in a minute and philip was found at azotus and passing through he preached in all the cities till he came to caesarea so you notice that god was working through the life of philip i don't want to say that god was using philip or anything because using uh, sounds more like you know god is utilizing us but you you get what i'm saying right a, a person who is willing to be used by god different different ways different different places god is giving opportunities to philip and supernaturally by the angel by the voice of the lord in this case supernatural transportation it's like saying you know uh nancy is in bangalore she finished her ministry here then you don't see me anymore i'm gone from the video right so i go off to mumbai because god has an assignment for me there can these things happen in the church today we don't see the bible say that it has stopped so supernatural transportation it is possible but of course based on the assignment so god needed philip to go to certain cities to preach and philip went okay and philip preached too and in fact these uh, cities in caesarea it, we are told that they were gentile cities so you notice how uh, the gospel is spreading to all communities so there's no question of it's only meant for the jews or a certain section of the society god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life so the gospel is going out to everyone so this is about philip and philip ministering to ethiopian eunuch and philip being supernaturally transported so any comments any thoughts from your side any questions okay i think kiran has a question here i will answer that in the meantime if you all have anything more you can add so uh, she has said how do you recognize if god said to go different place for gospel so kiran um, there is a publication apc publication on god's guidance okay you can read that uh, it's comprehensive the different ways in which god speaks have been listed out mainly through the word of god then through the holy spirit the impressions of the holy spirit um the prophetic word so so many are listed out so god can speak in all these ways kiran through a dream through a vision and in any one of these ways or let's say god may use more than one way to confirm to you that he wants you to go here or he wants you to go somewhere else so uh, when it is confirmed you know that uh, you will be going there for the sake of the gospel okay so uh yeah anyone do you do you have any testimony like this like you already were told by god and you knew you have to go here or do this or do that for ministry anyone has any such testimony okay uh, i'll just uh, share one one testimony that i i can recall from my life uh, this was for the gospel not necessarily to preach or anything but for uh, okay princess not yet that's okay prince i'll just share a quick thing uh, this happened when i was a student and i uh, a student as in you know i was i was still pursuing my my uh, masters program and i wanted to go to study uh, but i didn't have any plans like immediately to go and and study a particular course it was there in my heart and i thought yeah at the right time god will do it but in a youth camp i remember one auntie when she was praying for me she said i can see travel bags 
and the kind that you you know the trolley bags at the airport like you you drag them and you go right so that kind of a trolley bag and i was not used to those bags i was generally used to the bags that you carry like when you go in a train or in a bus so she said no but when i'm praying for you i'm seeing those travel bags i feel like god is going to take you to another country something like that and all and uh, i i never i i couldn't accept it because i thought no i'm not planning to go to any country but it actually happened in some time in a miraculous way one course that i wanted to do god uh, made god gave an open door and i i traveled uh, and i i was doing that course this this was in australia so when i went there uh, one day i i you know i i just re- i thought of that auntie and the word which she had told me that i you know she sees me with travel bags that trolley bag and all so then i wrote back to her and i told her auntie you remember you had uh, prophesied over me and said that god is taking me uh, somewhere uh, to another country i am actually in another country right now so she was so amazed so it just one example of a prophetic word how god can speak to you and show you that i am going to do this i am going to take you here or there for ministry so uh, kiran is asking one more question is it possible for god uh, to give his word to our mouth yes kiran yes god can do that and that's that's how god ministers he always gave his word to his prophets and his preachers so he gives the word uh, and what else kiran i saw your hand lifted any any other question you have no ma'am that that's it thank you okay great praise god yes thank you so like that you know you just depend on the leading of the holy spirit many ways god can speak so i was sharing in uh, the second year class that uh, luke 21 luke 21 5 on oh, i keep forgetting that verse number uh, yeah luke 21 uh, 15 okay that verse it says for i will give you utterance and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict so this is the verse which god gave me when i had to preach my first sermon because i was not at all confident uh, you know the opportunity came to preach and i never thought that preaching is something god is calling me to do but when i came back and i prayed like pastor had asked me for the first time and at that time again you know i is i just finished my studies and uh, in in the north church it was a smaller congregation of course uh, and uh, he said okay would you be comfortable to preach one sunday i thought preach how can you ask me to preach i don't preach you know i'm just a kid and i went back and i was so scared i was like oh no what do i do now and i meditate you know went back to uh, the word i was praying and i was asking god please give me lord confirmation confirmation this is the verse i got i was so amazed because exact was i got for i will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict it's in a different context but at that time it hit me and i knew oh god you know you are showing me that i should take this so i should not be scared i should do this and this was one verse but god gave me a few more verses also so that way i was confident i said okay fine god wants me to move in this direction i should i should start sharing slowly i should start sharing you know uh, just last year i was thinking um it was last year was 10 years since i preached my first sermon and little did i know that you know i am going to move uh, in the ministry line and you know slowly uh, opportunity came slowly you know pastoral role and for me f- frankly i never thought i never thought i will share or speak or serve in the ministry or anything like that but just being led you know how like philip god says okay now you do this now you do that now you do the next thing so god leads us like that and uh, we can just take it up 
and keep moving keep moving keep moving and uh, just a little bit you know from from how god has led me as i look back i'm amazed i'm thinking wow lord i would have never imagined okay what how you have guided in the ministry so kiran i hope that helps you in some way that's why i'm sharing yes ma'am is touch too much shall i share ma'am something yeah 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 sure One please minute. please go ahead i something it happened i i was like praying i some some fellowship uh, prayer it was happening and i was like praying for family salvation the basically the my prayer part so i was like praying for uh, parents and family salvation i was praying praying and all and suddenly one i also i was like uh, 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 worry about like future ministry and something different and all and suddenly one word ma'am cam and said in my mouth and uh, i i totally is in a spirit and i was like repeating that word continuously and i did not recognize that word from where it came and when i open my eyes i i saw like everyone is like praying tongue and full worship is going on and i full shocked and i thought like nobody here right <laughs> that i was yeah. thinking like what it she is speaking then i stopped but i did not recognize that down that moment but later on i was like but something it happened on that day and i was like i i returned back and the daily schedule it was happening but something it happened on that day mm-hmm. later i was like praying praying thing what it happened what is that what i did not later on one word ma'am i want to read uh, psalms 89 and uh, 89 34 over there uh, is written my covenant i will not break nor mm-hmm. alter the word that has gone out of my lip then something hit it me and before full life full like a believers and spiritual life i did not uh read this verse on that day totally it hit me and all and that day i i received um, i and i i was starting to crying and all and something it was like something different uh, unexpected and something different and all not believing also so i just let to god and all and just i prayed and just gave thank and just i i just leave it and later on it it happened uh, years and but something it is there and just moving by like uh, how it like situation is going on and suddenly i'm just uh, moving yeah yeah thank praise you. god thank you thank you kiran thank you for sharing so you know we see right like how god is working in our lives also yes, just yes, the yes. way yeah just the way he was working in the lives of the believers and the apostles he led them so that is their ministry they did it okay samaria then uh, ethiopian eunuch then he uh, went what is that place azotis that is philip's ministry today you and i we hear the voice of god we have to do what god is telling us to do and uh, i'm sure the holy spirit is guiding each one of you just be sensitive and uh, i already told you that book on god's guidance you can also look it up uh, and it explains quite thoroughly the many ways in which god speaks to our hearts uh, and we can expect you know if when a believer like philip when a believer like stephen they they did mighty works for god every believer in the church can uh, do mighty works for god okay it's not big believer small believer nothing like that if they are sincerely growing with the lord surely every believer can make a great difference for the kingdom of god okay so we can also encourage all our believers when we do the ministry yeah kiran that's nice that you shared we are happy uh, <laughs> yeah praise god praise god that you know you shared from your life so wonderful we we've, we've seen so much in uh, the life of uh, philip and you know what uh, one more thing i'll i'll add here i know right now we don't see any title given to philip but later in acts itself uh, we will see him 
as the evangelist okay philip the evangelist but only later he is being called as an evangelist so don't also wait for titles we can just serve god whatever capacity you know maybe our pastor is telling us can you do this can you do that just serve serve with a pure heart serve with whatever we have and god is faithful you know if he wants to lead you in one of the if you are called for one of the fivefold ministry offices he will equip prepare and you will serve from that uh, position but otherwise you don't let's not worry too much about it we will do our part and god is faithful to bless the work which we do so that's what that is the attitude we see in stephen and philip they never said uh, oh no why should we do it you know let the let the apostle do it you know, why should i go to samaria tell the pastor to go not like that whatever was put in his heart he did it faithfully we can also do that whether there is a title or there is no title and we know when we do the work faithfully if god has something in store for us that will come our way so that is about acts chapter 8 now let us go to acts chapter 9 so before i go uh, to acts chapter 9 are you all comfortable is this space good is this uh, style of sharing okay for all of you you want me to be fast slow please give me some feedback otherwise i will not know whether you are benefiting from what i am what i am saying any feedback class okay you're learning something right okay praise god okay wonderful wonderful and uh, you know feel comfortable i know in between you will have some questions here and there just unmute yourself and you can ask the question i am going uh, continuously because we have portions to complete that's the only reason but uh please feel free to interrupt at any point okay great i'm happy that you're learning uh, let's move on to chapter 9 here again another beautiful beautiful chapter because the way god has uh worked in the lives of you know people like simon you never imagine simon will become a believer what are you saying you know the ethiopian eunuch treasurer of the uh, uh the ethiopian queen he will become a believer what are you saying you know so in the same way here saul of tarsus and we talked about how he was passionately persecuting the church dragging men women imprisoning them and all that okay what kind of a human being does that but he was doing it so it's about saul of tarsus encountering jesus acts chapter 9 and you know we will never forget this acts chapter 9 because saul the persecutor is becoming a believer in this chapter so how is uh, saul's attitude at the beginning of this chapter it still says that he was breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the lord so there is violence involved to the point of murder so you can understand what kind of a mindset he has but of course you know the reason he explains in other uh, writings of his that he was passionate and he thought he was doing the righteous works of god he felt that the law of god which was given to the jews it is being corrupted by the wrong teaching of jesus and that is the reason he thought righteously i have to protect the law he thought about it in that way and he went ahead and persecuted those who believed in jesus so he is giving them threats murder okay is also happening and it says he went to the high priest to ask letters so it's like you know when uh, uh, they give a uh, they they pass a rule or there is a policy the government will announce they will say okay it's like this permission been granted you know you open the uh, covid restrictions lifted you can have your meetings you know you can have this you can have gym you can have spa all that so government is telling you 
but in the case of paul he is not waiting for the government to tell he is going to the government and saying you give me fast give me the letter i want the restrictions to be lifted because i want to do this right so he is so passionate that he is going to the high priest who was the authority of the times and he is asking for letters and saying if you give me permission i am ready right now i will go i will catch all these people who are preaching about jesus i will put them in the prison so uh, you can almost get a picture of saul of tarsus well educated uh, you know strong person angry person uh, and uh, influential person uh, hard working person he is not waiting for the opportunity to come to him he is going to take the opportunity so he took the letters to go uh, to the synagogues of damascus so that is where he is headed now so saul is moving in the direction of damascus if he found anybody there uh, he was planning he didn't care men women he didn't care but he wanted to bring them bound to jerusalem so catch these people tie them up bring them we'll we'll show them what is the real way and you notice uh, he is trying to get the people of the way it says so the way is the name which was used for the church at that time okay the way or you could say it was the name which was used for this movement about jesus that had taken place during that times from uh, jerusalem and paul was passionate he's like anybody belonging to that group i am not going to spare you here i come damascus i'm coming with the permission letters so he journeyed uh as he journeyed he came near damascus okay and now we see it says and suddenly so and suddenly happened in acts chapter 2 the birth of the church and suddenly the holy spirit was poured out right tongues of fire upon all those who were waiting in the upper room one more and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven did saul ever expect that this is going to happen to him i don't think so because it says suddenly how did this happen how did god encounter the persecutor you remember when uh, uh you know stephen was being persecuted he also prayed he prayed and he said god you know these people they don't know what they are doing so he actually forgives and he prays for the persecutors saul is one of them in that group of persecutors and the early church i am sure the early church would have prayed there's a lot of persecution going on they too would have cried out to god they would have called out to god and said god you know you change the hearts of these people who are doing the wrong thing against your word against your gospel okay and we also know that god's will for every human being is that they should know the uh, they should come to know jesus so god had a plan god had a purpose for saul so all the prayers put together and god's purpose for saul when he is passionately going to do the wrong things suddenly it says so god meets him god encounters him and how does god encounter him this is like a supernatural encounter a light around him from heaven it shines okay it just stops him it says then he fell to the ground because you know maybe the light was so bright and shocking he never expected so in that fear it's possible that a bold man like him he just fell to the ground and he heard a voice saying to him saul saul why are you persecuting me okay it's again so beautiful because it shows us how jesus considers the persecuted church so when somebody in the church is being persecuted jesus didn't say saul why are you persecuting them or why are you persecuting my people when somebody is being persecuted how does god take it saul saul 
why are you persecuting me he takes it very personally it's as if those who are being troubled for the sake of the gospel those who are being you know uh, ill treated lied about beaten threatened so much of hardship people are going through for the gospel and sometimes we think god are you even noticing all the pain that the people are going through what did jesus tell saul from heaven saul saul why are you persecuting me okay so it shows us that our god is feeling the pain of that persecuted person you and me right whenever we go through opposition rejection for the gospel sake jesus feels the pain of that uh, rejection okay so i think i will stop here it is very beautiful but time is up so we will take up uh, from chapter 9 in the next class okay uh, and uh, yeah we will wrap up for now mm, anyone if you could just pray sidarth are you okay to pray to close yeah ma'am sure ah yeah yeah sure thank you but we just want to thank you for this day that given us thank you for learning about from the book of acts lord jesus but we just want to pray uh, we believe god that everything in the old testament i mean in the new testament that there's so many things that happen suddenly god that you move and your presence move lord and there's so many more people who came to you god i just want to pray the same thing over now in our country in our nation god your spirit will flow through us our father god jesus god i pray that many more people will come to you god and i pray that bless each and every one of us as we listen to your word god i pray that be with us and guide us and lead us as we continue our day in jesus name we pray Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Sudhar. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Continue to have a good uh, day today, and I'll see you again next week. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. God bless.